In our next lesson on oxidative phosphorylation from chapter 15, we want to look at the last complex in our system, complex 4, and then we'll briefly summarize the electron transport system. In our last lesson, we'd passed electrons through complex 3 to cytochrome C, a small soluble protein in the inner membrane space. Here we have kind of an overlap of a space filling model and a ribbon diagram. As you can see, indeed, a very small protein. And there's our heme group in red in the center. Remember, it's the iron atom in the center of that heme ring that carries the electrons. They're one electron carriers, and so if we have two electrons to carry, we need two of these proteins. It will shuttle electrons from complex 3 to complex 4, and it needs to be able to move from one complex to the other. That's why it's soluble in the intermembrane space, so that it can move between these complexes. Complex 4 is the last component in our system. It is called cytochrome oxidase because its job is to oxidize cytochrome C. It catalyzes the reaction at the bottom of the screen here. It's going to oxidize cytochrome C from iron 2 to iron 3, in, and in the process it will reduce oxygen. To fully reduce one molecule of oxygen to two molecules of water, it actually takes four electrons, and that's why we need four cytochrome C carriers to fully accomplish this. So four electrons, that would be two trips down the electron transport chain in order to fully reduce oxygen to two molecules of water. Let's just briefly look at what happens at complex four. It takes the electrons from cytochrome C and passes those to oxygen. In the process, it's going to pump two protons for every two electrons. An interesting point is that complex four is the only member of our chain that actually has a copper redux center. So the oxidized copper two becomes reduced to copper one. Not only are we accumulating protons on the intermembrane space side because of the pumping through complex 4, we're also decreasing the concentration of protons on the matrix side because we're going to use some of those protons in the process of reducing oxygen to water. So why are there so many components to this electron transport chain? Why not a simple complex, just a single protein or, or multi-subunit complex? Multiple carriers means multiple proton pumping stations. Remember, as we move the electrons with the reduction potential, it releases energy, and we're using that energy to pump protons. In other words, we've converted the energy of the electron into a concentration gradient, a proton gradient. And we'll see more later of how we can utilize that and convert that into a form of chemical energy. But the more of these proton pumping stations we have, the more of the energy we can store. We lose less of that energy. In our next video lesson, we'll see a little bit more particularly how we capture that energy in electron transfer, and we'll look at two aspects to that proton gradient.